Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, got another question. This one comes from Who Cares? And he or she says, How did you make the shift from your pre Islamic life style to an Islamic one? Do you still struggle? Does it still haunt you? Honestly, it could help a lot of Muslims in the West who have been corrupted by the Western lifestyle and are struggling to get back on track. Lots of Muslims in the West fall for zina, alcohol, I'm afraid. They are struggling to get out of the, that loop. Very good question. Um, the thing is, <clears throat> temptation, alcohol, zina, that lifestyle is not exclusive to the West. Um, I lived in Egypt and I lived in Yemen for a year apiece and I was honestly shocked. I don't want to, to offend anybody from any countries in which I mentioned, but I just want to give you a perspective of what I saw, you know, living amongst, um, in, in a foreign country. So when I was in Egypt, I got off the, the into the airport and um, I, got into, I got into Egypt in the nighttime. So I didn't really get to look on the street what was going on. Um, but when I woke up, mashallah, I prayed Fajr and, uh, you know, I went about my business and, you know, had some tea at a tea shop. And I was very happy to be in Egypt because, you know, for the most part, it's a Muslim country. Um, you can practice your deen, you know, mostly. And um, my shock came when I went up to Alexandria, where I lived in uh, Al, uh, Al Safra. I lived in Al Safra and uh, close to the Bahr close to the Corniche. Egyptians know what I'm talking about. And um, something shocked me. I saw that um, women at that time, it was 2005, I don't know, it was the, the fad or something, but every, every Egyptian woman had, almost every Egyptian woman had a uh, very extremely tight um, denim skirt on, long skirt. And they were very tight and their tops were very, very tight. I even remember thinking these women wear tighter clothes here than they do back in America. You know, sure, in America, women wear bikinis and they, you know, they take off their clothes basically, especially in the summertime. But this is a Muslim country and, I, and it always shocked me that um, this type of thing would happen here of all places. So, you know, I worked, I was an English teacher in Egypt and <clears throat> One buddy of mine said, hey, do you want to go run, ride motorcycles? You know, there's a place I know over in uh, the, the, the people from Alexandria know what I'm talking about. There's a the street called Shara Khalid Ibn al-Walid, of all places. Street Khalid Ibn al-Walid. Meet me there at midnight. So, okay, anyways, we get there. I see my buddy. Um, we I, I rent a motorcycle and he says, careful, Ali. When you come to the street, be careful. I said, why? What's, what's going on? And he said, well, this street is known for prostitution. This street is known for getting hash, getting hashish. This, you can get everything on the street, basically. And I was like, but we're in Egypt. What? What are you talking about? So my point is, no matter if you're in the West or in the East, there's temptation. No matter if you're in the West or the East, there is drugs, alcohol, zin trust me, there is zina all over the world, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, America, Malaysia, Indonesia, and every single Muslim country that you can, can think about. There's the temptation of alcohol, zina, drugs, all of that. Uh, even atheism is like a new trend in uh, Muslim countries. People are um, unfortunately looking, viewing Islam as false or they're not satisfied with it or whatever. And in my mind, I think that's a way bigger um, problem if people are leaving Islam, not saying and not condoning that uh, alcohol and drugs and zina are wrong. Definitely they are, definitely, without a doubt. Uh, but there's also the, 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 a spreading disease of atheism within our, our Muslim countries. So, um, yeah, I think in the East and the West, we, we ha we're susceptible, we're, 
open to any type of attack from the shayateen, uh, from, among, from amongst uh, you know people's lower desires and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> she says that, uh, or he says, or she's, I don't know who it is, but how did I make this shift? Well, for me, it was, you know, when I, when I got locked up, I'm, I don't mean to expose my sins, but these were things that I did before Islam. Um, I, I was, while I did my crime that led me to prison, I was under the influence heavily, right? Um, but when I, be, when I got into prison and I cleaned my life up and I became a Muslim, was it hard for me to stop drinking? Was it hard for me to stop smoking weed? Was it hard for me to stop womanizing or whatever? Uh, no, because my fitrah, I believe, was always of a Muslim. I always wanted everything that I found Islam in Islam, I wish that I would have found it like this in Christianity. I was always looking for that, you know, some type of moral compass, rules, regulation, you know, something authentic, a book which is authentic that I could live my life by. And so in Islam, I found it. So therefore, you know, when I got out of prison, was it hard? Well, it wasn't hard for me to leave drinking and smoking weed. No, not at all. Uh, maybe women, because I wasn't married when I got out of prison and I was, I was in prison for a while. Yeah. But you know, alhamdulillah, um, I find that if you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you, and, and you really desire something for his sake, uh, meaning a wife or to, to step away from addiction, whatever it may be, it's easy when you push, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So hopefully that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.